Good morning, everybody. And uh, it's uh, New Year's Day, and we've had a couple of people that wanted to talk about VFDs a little bit. And I've gotten a few messages, and they've seen the VFDs that are scattered around my shop. That's the one on my mill there. That is a single phase input, or technically, it's a poly phase input. That would be two hot legs. Uh, so it's uh, two phases. And but two phase is not a, a recognized term. It's also known as polyphase. So that's uh, two phases of input and three phases of output, and that's driving a uh, that's a two horsepower rated unit down here on the door of the lathe. And I use that one to variable speed the lathe. You can see my old variable speed drive in there. That's the old Reeves drive that I took out, and that's. Uh, I just replaced the hand crank with a, uh, that's a 10K speed pot for speed reference. And I actually have this, this uh, needle here uh, calibrated to all the various speeds. So that made kind of a nice little uh, plate there. Uh, but anyways, that's what I use to drive the lathe. And I'm, uh, again, two phases of input, three phases of output. And I took off the single phase motor and put in a, put in a three phase unit. And that's it there, hanging upside down. Now here's a, a unit that we use, a same controller, and it just goes inside of a cabinet here. And this unit is controlling uh, a blower motor uh, via a photohelic. Uh, we use uh, speed reference high and low switch gear to ramp a motor up and down to maintain positive pressure in a, a laboratory clean room environment. You guys have probably already seen this. I run that off to the side. Now I like these uh, the SM vector drives. Uh, a couple of reasons. The, the housing on these is nice. Nothing exposed in the back. This is just a heat sink which is just an aluminum finned uh, heat sink to allow the heat out. And if metal chips or anything get down there, there's no electronics or anything there that, that are going to get hurt. And also they've got a wiring box uh, built right into the bottom here. So you don't have any open wiring like, uh, I don't know, some of the cheap little Ticos and some of the little Chinese things. You know, after you spend a, or actually after you save a bunch of money on a VFD, <laughs> you got to end up putting it in a box and you what you know what you spin on a box and the Tico you end up with this big box you gotta find a home for it and you can just put this on and it's, it's got the Nemo 1 wiring box already built into it and all the wiring is uh, enclosed behind this uh, panel here I like these keypads because they're sealed they don't have any individual buttons or anything on them so you get on there with your oily fingers and you got nothing to worry about these are good little American made uh, units Uh, let me talk about the different ways to control. Uh, this is set up to remote um, start and stop. I turn on my switch here. As you can see, I'm ramping up over there. And now we just hit 60 hertz. Here's if I can zoom in just a little bit on that thing. Back up to 60 in the forward position, I'm in the forward run position, and now you're running at 60 hertz. Now if I am to just take this thing and I'm just going to cram it all the way through stop and all the way over to reverse, and I'll show you what it does. It decelerates, goes to zero, and then it ramps back up. It's not going to give it a, for, a forward or a reverse run command until the motor has come to a complete stop. So the unit is smart enough to know to turn itself off come all the way to a stop before applying the run command in the opposite direction. Um, that's programmable, uh, very easily done. So you can get real flippy with your switches and not worry about uh, just totally reversing the polarity to your motor. Um, so, And that's great for tapping, if you're doing some power tapping and things like that. 
Uh, these are momentary push buttons. And uh, this one is on a maintained type control. I use the factory switch here. And I, it's, it's just the old drum switch, but I'm only using... Uh, it's a three-pole drum switch, but I'm only using one of the poles to activate the VFD. So when I flip that switch, that's what sends me up to drive right there. And uh, at this point, see our buttons here don't work. But a simple pr uh, parameter change, which is uh, P100, and I go down to zero on P100, and now I have start stop control here. And stop. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of programs here. Um, uh, P100, uh, input value 1, enter, is your uh, remote source. And your remote source is either going to be maintain contact like this, or like on the lathe, it's got maintain contact with the, with the old drum switch. And this is actually the old drum switch too. I mean, I'm just running a very small Belden cable off of it with uh, two conductors in it, just to one pole of the three available poles in the uh, factory drum switch to operate the VFD. Uh, same there, just run two conductors over to that switch, and uh, that one is programmed in to use a speed reference. And speed reference is a programmable parameter, and that the speed reference is a 10K pot. And that's that little potentiometer you see there on the uh, on the dial, uh, and that's maintained contact. That one over there, momentary contact. Uh, speed reference on that one. I use the push buttons uh, right on the VFD because it's because it's right there. So I just bring my uh, I bring my frequency down right there. So. Um, I mean, I, I could very easily program this to run off of, uh, I could have two more push buttons, one push one to ramp up, push another one to ramp down. I could have a speed pot here where I could just turn it one way or the other. Um, you know, or just go right off the, directly off the keypad. Here's another example. Um, we ramped up to a, to a start. And now I'm gonna I'm gonna run it all the way to 100 hertz, and there she is running at 100 hertz, and I'm just gonna hit the reverse button. And typically this is a big no-no on like a three-phase machine or something that doesn't have a VFD. But you, you're gonna want, you're gonna see the display go into DEC, which means uh, decelerate, uh, which also means within the unit it's using the DC bus to brake the motor. So it's actually uh, applying a electrical brake to the motor and you'll see a reverse command right here get applied and it'll just be blinking until the, re the reverse command gets uh, taken and it happens in the blink of an eye but it decelerated the motor and applied the reverse command after the motor had come to a complete stop and the braking was finished and we go back to forward and let you watch that one more time It was a very fast ramp down and a very fast ramp up, but it changes directions very quickly. Uh, well, it, you can't even see it at the low speeds. I'm going to take it all the way down to the low speed, 20 hertz, and I'm going to apply a reverse command. It's just literally um, almost instant, and if you're tapping, that's just what you want. You want to just stop that tap and turn it and get it going the other direction. switch so I'm just going to flip it off right now so it's set to uh, ramp down 
it's not trying to stop a huge rotating mass so it'll ramp down and when you turn it back on it'll actually ramp up to avoid belt slippage or any other uh, lock order conditions and uh, these units are nice uh, you can make the display display whatever you want right there that is referencing uh, Hertz so that is uh, running at 8 Hertz at my minimum drive speed there and here I just have uh, you know you can go to any electronic store and get a, a 10k pot and they've got nice little knobs you can put on them which in here I'm, I'm bringing up my uh, speed of my lathe right there and it should go all the way to 2000 and I've got it set to ramp uh, right there it's running at 47 hertz and if I just crank my knob all the way down it's going to slowly ramp down, back down to my 8 hertz and run there. Say you're tapping or you know you want to make a heavy cut during low speed or you're drilling something large and uh, you don't want to you don't want a high speed for that but you want to be able to remove quite a bit of material and the machine needs more torque at the low RPMs than it does the high RPMs. Well, the, the vector controls are going to do that for you. They're going to, they're going to, there's two types of drives and two ways drives can be programmed. One is called a variable torque and one is called a constant torque. A variable torque would be used for maybe a blower because as the RPM increases, so does the load as the fan is trying to move the air but a constant torque would be something for maybe a conveyor where it always has to move the same amount of weight no matter what so you have to be aware that there's constant torque and variable torque also I think we should probably talk about um, motors um, between the, the and the difference between two pole and four pole motors. Uh, typically, a two pole motor is going to be a high RPM motor, and if you try to slow down uh, a high RPM motor, which is usually in the three thousand to thirty four hundred range, if you try to slow it down too much, you get a phenomenon known as slip. Uh, you've only got two poles to, to drive within that motor and uh, you've got more of a chance for that motor to slip and you can't get the torque out of them. Um, but you do the same thing with a 1700 RPM base motor. Now we're working with a four pole motor and there's less of a chance of it slipping at the lower speeds. So you don't have to boost your uh, vector control up as much. What you want to do with those is if you still need say at the lower RPMs we need a bunch of torque but say we want to exceed 1700 RPM on the motor now this is usually usually easily done the rotors inside of a four pole motor which is 1700 RPM are identical in every way to the rotors inside of a two pole motor which is the 3000 RPM you can overdrive a, th a four pole motor and get more RPM and go beyond the rated uh, Hertz and RPM of that motor. So you could get 2000 RPM or 2200 RPM out of a four pole motor that's only rated for 1700 RPM. Your only limiting factor is your amp draw and you have to go off the tagged amperage draw off of the motor as long as you don't exceed that, you're going to be fine. And I've got I've got fans, pumps, blowers, conveyors in service that are being overdriven and running eight and ten hours a day with no problems. So for your machinery, don't be afraid to overdrive your motor. Um, do not overdrive a a two pole, but overdriving a four pole is perfectly acceptable. Um, I, I will demonstrate one other thing. This thing is, uh, we'll go all the way up to, uh, okay, here's a good example. 
I am overdriving this motor. This is a very old, that is 60 hertz. And that is a antique motor. And it was, a, it was an odd one. It's uh, with the four pole, I checked it, it is a four pole motor. But it's only rated for 900 um, RPM. And I wanted to get a little more out of that. So this is actually the rated RPM at 60 hertz. But I've got this, uh, this setup trimmed out, so I, I, I overdrive the motor. So I'm going to take it up. We're running it at 100 hertz right now. Uh, no troubles. I mean, I've been running this thing for uh, quite some time. Like I said, the only limiting factor on overdriving a motor like this is the tagged amperage on the motor. Don't ever exceed the tagged amperage. And you need to know the difference between service factor amps and amps. Uh, service factor amps is the point where you need to go into overload and alarm and not pull ever any more than that. Uh, service factor amps is basically an alarm condition. Uh, running amps or tagged amps, not including service factor, um, is normal. And I would never exceed the just the tagged amperage service factor amps if if it doesn't say sfa on it somewhere um service factor is very very easily uh, calculated you take your running amps or your standard amperage and you multiply it by the service factor of the motor now the service factor on the motor is going to be 1.15 1.2 uh, i've seen them as low as 1.10 um, so you take your standard running amps multiply it by your 1.1 or your 1.15 and um, that's going to give you your service factor amps and that is the point where your VFD needs to be programmed to go into alarm and lock out or trip a breaker or trip an overload block or whatever uh, these are programmable for running protection for, for your service factor amps so you, t you program into these the ragged edge right where they're going to trip and, uh, and that's all done off your motor data plates. But I thought I would share some of this stuff with you uh, to maybe help you out and help you make your selection of, uh, of uh, VFDs. Okay? If you've got any specific questions, mainly with these uh, units, go ahead and leave them here on the channel. Uh, I'll help you out as much as I can. And... Uh, I've got books on these things that I can reference and uh, help you guys set these things up if you need it. But, uh, yeah, just uh, leave a comment and I'll be happy to help any way I can. Thanks for watching.